Uh, stock of the day, I thought we'd take a look at Kogan, can share the discretion, Rick. Uh, retail and services company posted um, quarterly gross sales just shy of $200 million, down 6.5% year on year. Gross profit up 19.5% from last year, ne- nearly $40 million. Uh, Russell Kogan, chief executive, the boss, said that the company is going to introduce deals in the coming months to make their products and services more accessible to consumers dealing with cost of living challenges. Okay, not sure what that's all about, but they're focusing on that. Michael, what did you think of this? Sales down, margins up by the look of it. Um, what do you think of Kogan at the moment? I haven't looked at it for a while until this morning in today's update. Um, the business, by all accounts, has been going through a period of, of consolidation, uh, whatever, whatever that means. Um, but basically, they've just been trying to restructure the way they do business, try and work through a lot of the inventory that they had um, on, their, on their books already. Um, but I think it's a little bit of a, it's, it's not a coincidence, put it this way, that they've managed to deliver the first quarterly growth number or quarter on quarter growth number um, in a couple of years. And I think inflation has something probably to do with that, where they're yeah. able to pass on higher prices yeah. to consumers and that helps boost their revenue. And off the back of that, their earnings have done well as well because margins are higher. So, so they've been feeding in so to the inflation. Period. Yeah, I, look, it's... I think so, potentially. Yep. I, I don't know for sure, I don't follow it closely enough, but it's a difficult environment you'd have to think coming up for retail. Perhaps Kogan will be a beneficiary of that as people move away from some of those bigger ticket items or those more expensive high-end brands. Um, but otherwise, I still think it's gonna be a bit of a, a challenging environment. Kogan has been doing a, a big share buyback and that's probably helped the share price to some degree as well. Right. Um, but it's a long, long way as you can see from those heady days um, the management have been called into question previously in the past, particularly when things have been going well in lightening the load and reducing their exposure. Um, but again, I just don't see it as the highest quality retailer. If I was looking at an online retailer, maybe Setai is probably preferred. But right. again, we're not really exposed much at all to okay. this retail space. So no view. Mathan? Um, I think that's the great way for Michael to say management has uh, <laughs> got issues. Um, yeah, on the first bore, you know, tick, you look at management track record and you go, ah, no, nah, not going right. there. Um, so Kogan is, I think retail is going to be tough. Retail has actually pulled back. Um, there are some, uh, the high quality ones actually outperformed, like super retail, as we've done really well. Some have had actually a decent bounce uh, on the result because the expectations were so low. Um, but I think um, Michael's right. I think the cycle we're going into is we can already see consumer spending shrinking because of inflation starting to buy high interest rates, um, starting to buy that always takes time and we had a, a fair amount of savings we burned through that um so we're beginning to see consumer spending i think christmas uh, is going to be tough for consumers and retail and that tends to play into media as well so we're worried about all this uh, domestic consumer-based cyclicals um so i would be staying away um right. if you're trying to pick in retail there's high quality retail and then there's the rest and this is in the rest okay no need to be there all right um so uh, you're saying Christmas could be tough. Um, today's inflation figure, is that the end of any chance of a Santa rally on the share market? Oh, hey, look, we, there is always something, right? Uh, you know, in the last nine months, I think there's been at least nine China optimism stories that never actually played out. Right. We've got one going right now. Um, so in, in that context, you can never discount the market's ability to jump from one hope to another. Um, so, uh, you know, Santa Rally, we could have a Santa Rally at the end of December. We could have it in just in December. So never right. discount that. Seasonality amazes me all the time. Uh, but overall, if I'm looking at six to 12 months down the track, I think you're going to get most retail stocks cheaper uh, in the next yeah. six to 12 months than where it is now. Michael, any Santa Rally for you? Look, it's possible, depending on what happens in the US or China, as Nathan touches upon. I mean, the US inflation picture looks a lot healthier than the Australian inflation picture. Yeah. Um, they've still got very elevated shelter costs, which are starting to come down, but really from very high. So there's still a lot to come out in the US um, in in terms of the inflation. Um, So you might get this fragmented market situation, but it's also important to understand that historically, during inflationary times, the market tends to do quite well in absolute terms. It's just that once you look at it in real terms and account for that six, 7% inflation, your real returns aren't so good. So... It is possible if inflation stabilizes at four or five percent, 
then markets can do all right in that environment. I think we just have to see inflation not continue to rise and creep back up. Stabilise. Yeah. All right, let's get into the stocks that you want us to take a look Actually, at. Just, just, uh, a, yeah, just a quick one. Yep. Um, just on that monthly CPI, if you look at it pre-pandemic to now, the you know if you use the basket of the uh, CPI, prices, I mean, forget the inflation number, actual prices, according to that basket, are up about 15% oh. since December 2019, 15%. So most people experience that a lot more. So the average person hasn't got, hasn't had fifteen percent pay rise in that couple of years. No. So that's well, the problem. So that's yeah, yeah. why you've got to be Hang really on. careful. With Hang on. And everyone uh, talks about pay rises. Uh, Jim Chalmers talks about pay rises. Yep. The old Oprah. You could get a pay rise. You can get a pay rise. What he what he doesn't talk about is that you don't get all of that amount coming through. <laughs> he takes an increasing amount through bracket creep and tax. That's one of the reasons why the federal budget is in surplus because we are paying a record amount of personal income tax at the moment. So you might get eight, nine percent pay rise, but you're only going to get four or five percent of that uh, because right. he's going to take the rest in tax. And when the wages go up, and this is what every central bank complained about a year ago, when wages go up, then the prices will have to go up to pay for it. Oh, oh, and then yeah. you get more inflation. So right. it's, it's an endless yeah, loop. Yeah. Uh, which Michelle Bullock, I think, was sort of, uh, and Katie Gallagher was challenging the federal government, hey, don't leave all the heavy lifting to us in terms of inflation. You do your bit. Why don't you freeze government charges and no increases and things like that? Um, and share a bit of the pain as well as the rest of us. All right, let's